Welcome to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, where we explore how to build freedom through the entrepreneurial process. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and mindset needed to create your lifestyle of independence and flexibility. I'm your host, Ash Whitener, and this is episode 47, Mastermind Groups, The Secret Key to Success with Aaron Walker, veteran entrepreneur, life coach, and owner of ViewFromTheTop.com a website community dedicated to helping others achieve their goals and how to live a more purposeful life. We spend the majority of this interview discussing the impact that mastermind groups have had on Aaron's professional and personal life and why intentionally building relationships is the most important element for building a successful business. Longtime listeners will remember a previous discussion with Trevor Caverco in episode seven about mastermind groups and it was influential in his life. But this interview gets into mastermind groups in much more detail. The combination of accountability, networking, and most importantly, how focusing on personal relationships is the value that Aaron provides. Number one key to building a successful business is building relationships intentionally. Are you ready to become an entrepreneur? Do you want to have more control over your everyday life? If so, sign up for my weekly newsletter and receive all of the podcasts delivered directly to your email inbox. Also, keep up with me on social media by following on Twitter at Liberty E Podcast and Facebook.com slash Liberty Entrepreneurs. Show notes are found on our website and enjoy the show. Welcome back, everyone, to Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. This is Ash, and I'm very pleased to have on the show today Aaron Walker. He's a businessman and life coach. He started or founded eight different businesses, the first one when he was 18 and sold at 27 years old. Aaron, thank you so much for coming on. Hey, Ash. Thanks for having me on, man. So just a quick background. I met Aaron at the Podcast Movement 2016 conference in Chicago, and it was, it was really great. We were there with uh, your buddy, Matt Miller, who I just interviewed a couple weeks ago. Yeah, Matt's killing it over at School Spirit Vending. He's been an awesome client. He's a really cool guy, and he's killing it in the School Spirit Vending uh, arena right now. Yeah, if, if my audience wants to go back and listen to that interview, it's number forty three, I believe. And basically Matt Miller has, uh, he's building his freedom through entrepreneurship using vending machines. So go and check out that podcast. But Mr. Aaron Walker is the guest on the show today. Aaron, do you mind giving a quick bio of who you are? Yeah, sure. Thanks for asking me. And it's a real pleasure to be on Liberty Entrepreneurs today. And I appreciate that. You know, I don't want to make this interview about me. I want to make it about your listeners. But just for context, I'll go back and give you just a quick overview. At 18 years old, I started my first business. I met a couple of guys that had a lot of money because I didn't have any. And we formed a partnership. Uh, God really blessed that business immeasurably. I got married two weeks out of high school, Ash. So my wife came in, helped me grow the business. We decided to delay gratification and forget the big house and all the fancy cars. We poured all the money back into the company. And uh, in three years, we paid off a 10-year loan. We were 21 years old, had a paid-for business. We continued to take the money and stockpile it. We bought another store. We did the same thing with it. I repeated that exercise four different times. When I was 27, a Fortune 500 company in Fort Worth, Texas, came knocking on our door. You know, this is a 90-day process, but to make it real quick, they, they ended up making me an offer I couldn't refuse. So I was out, completely sold out. Took a break, and 18 months later, my wife woke me up from a nap, and she said, you're getting fat and lazy, (laughs) and you need to do something. So I go back, start uh, negotiating a deal with the guy that owns the store I started with when I was a child, and we worked out a deal. I bought half the company. We spent the next nine years building that company four times the size it was. Had an ideal situation, Ash. I worked three days a week. He worked the other three, and we did that for a decade. It was amazing. Until August 1st, 2001, I was headed to the office and had a horrific automobile accident. A pedestrian was crossing the street, didn't see me, just didn't look my way. And I ran over and killed a pedestrian and Mm. it absolutely rocked my world. Mm -hmm. So I decided, you know what, man, I've been chasing money now. I was 41 at the time. I started when I was 18. I said, 
you know, I've got enough, I'm going to quit. So I retired, sold the business. And uh, it really dawned on me in that five-year process that I took off in that five-year time frame that I had had a lot of success. I came from nothing, literally nothing, and we did really well. But uh, there was no significance in my life. There was nobody else I was touching. Yeah, I know that you had met with Dave Ramsey, and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later yeah. in the show. But yeah. there was a quote of yours that I remember, and and I actually I think it was the name of a book that you read said uh, that you were learning to turn your life from success to significance. Aaron, what does that mean? Yeah, yeah. you know that's exactly what had happened. Bob Buford wrote that book called Halftime. And what that said to me was, is, uh, I had all the stuff. I had the big house and had a place on the beach. And at one time we had a place in the mountains and all the cars, we had all the stuff and nobody cared, but me and my family. Mm -hmm. And I was not making any impact on anybody around me. My, all my focus was inward, not outward. And so, uh, five years into this process, when I didn't work, uh, I did a lot of evaluation and, uh, thought, you know what, if I get involved in something else. I'm going to make it a point to help other people accomplish their goals and their dreams. And so Robin, for the second time, woke me up from a nap. She says, you're getting fat and lazy again. It's time to do something. Mm -hmm. Robin holds me to a tight line, you know? So I said, okay, so I go back, we go in the construction business and we build a very successful construction company over the next nine years. Seems like I'm like a 10 year guy. <laughs> and then I turned 50 and I said, I'm done. And my buddies, uh, as you mentioned earlier, Dave Ramsey, I've been in a, mastermind group with since you know 1995 we've been together dan miller 48 days to work you love ken abraham he's got about 110 books in print now <laughs> jeff mosley he owns ino records you know it's got it's a christian label here in nashville they've all been very successful and dave invited me to join his mastermind group and i said mastermind group what is that and he said just trust me so this is years and years and years ago. So I went to Dave's office and uh, it was awkward, Ash, at first. You know, I was sitting in a room with 10 guys I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Week after week, you know, everybody kind of let the veil down. They started becoming more transparent. And I thought, well, this is a safe environment, you know, because it's, you know, several miles from my house. I'm in South Nashville. I live in North Nashville. And feels kind of safe. So I started sharing some challenges that I was having and started becoming more vulnerable in that safe. Environment. Very much. So, you right. know, and what I learned over the course of many years is the more transparent, vulnerable we become. So do the participants in the group. And so it's a really, really good place to go because that's where strength starts. Mm -hmm. Admitting your weaknesses, admitting your faults, you know, areas that you need help in. Then the guys start rallying around you and you grow. What happens is, though, we keep that veil up. We don't want anybody to know that we're struggling in certain areas. When we do that, uh, you don't get better, right? right? You're just you're a fake. <laughs> yep. You're a facade. Yep. And so I've learned over the years, man, let that veil down with a few trusted advisors that are non-biased. It'll take you to places you've never been. Absolutely, Aaron. I, I love that story, and, and and I really concentrate on creating a safe environment for myself when I can with who I can, because if you're able to become vulnerable, you're right. That's where you can really poke in and take a look at those weaknesses and some of those insecurities and finally be aware of them and accept them and start building through them to become a stronger person. And, you know, I'm really excited to about this interview because we haven't had anyone on the show that's talked about mastermind groups before. And before we get in there, uh, Aaron, I know that one of your biggest failures of what you consider one of your failures is from a pawn shop that you started working at at a very young age and i believe you sold the pawn shop and now you wish that you'd have had some type of mastermind group or a trusted advisor yeah. to help coach you through that can you take us back to the pawn shop when sure. you started with it and just what you would sure. have done differently yeah well here's the thing I, I wasn't even introduced you know to the mastermind uh, concept until years later after that sale and i look back now and think i was 27 years old we literally, Ash, didn't have anything. I mean, when I say I came from a poor family, I mean like literally poor. We didn't have anything. And I had to go out and find guys with money to form that relationship and partnership. So I didn't have any background. I didn't know anything about being an entrepreneur. You know, my dad was a business person, but he wasn't a good one. You know, he was mm -hmm. a great man of character, honest. He had all those qualities, but he was a horrible business person. So I wasn't surrounded by business people. You know, we were blue collar. We just you didn't have anything. 
And so what I discovered after I sold it, I heard this number and this number resonated in my, you know, it's like, man, that's a lot of money. And that's, that's mine if I sell. And I did. But what I discovered after the process, after I got involved in mastermind groups, I would have been much better training a manager, you know, being an absentee owner. Uh, I could have made a lot more money in the process. Now, I'm not uh, I'm not regretting it a hundred percent, but there was a better way than the way I did it. I just didn't have anybody to go to. Right. I didn't know anybody to talk to. And that's the value of being in mastermind groups is because we only have one lens by which we can look at anything. You are only raised one way. You only have one lens, one filter. But when you get in a group of trusted advisors that are non-biased, they don't have anything to gain or lose. And I want to touch on that a little deeper in a second. Uh, they give you honest feedback and it takes time. A lot of people get into a mastermind group. They're in there three or four months. Well, that's insane. Uh, you, you need to get involved in a good group of guys and stay long term. I mean, I drove to Dave's office for a decade plus, you know, Wednesday mornings from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. were blocked out for me every Wednesday wow. for over a decade. And it was that valuable. It was a life changer for me, but I built long-term relationships. Here's what's funny. Dave just started, you know, I mean, he was nobody. He was like, he had to give me advertising to get me to buy into being a advertiser on his show. He was on one radio station in Nashville. And a lot of people say to me now, well, yeah, who wouldn't be in a mastermind group with Dave Ramsey and sure. Dan Miller? Yeah, but they weren't who they are today then. This is that's back. That's, this point. is back in the mid '90s, right? Yeah. This this is you know we've been together 21 years now, and my point is is when you guys come together, look at the businesses that have come out of there. Dan Miller just started 48 Days to the Work You Love. Ken Abraham had just started getting noticed. You know, and he's got 110 books in print. Uh, he's one of the most you know prolific authors in, on the continent, and that that's the value of coming together. Man, I can't even tell you it's been like dog fights in there. It's like, man, you can't do that or you got to do more of that or that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Or you need to quit. Do you know what I'm saying? They guide you along because here's what I wanted to touch on. A lot of people get in mastermind groups with their partner or they get in mastermind groups with their family members. Right. I suggest not doing that. And here's why. Those persons are biased, right? If they're family, they want kind of what you want. If they're your business partner, they have their own bias. But when you are totally detached from anybody, they can't make any money. They can't lose any money. There has no impact on their life whatsoever. What they tell you, now you're going to get an honest answer. And so I strongly urge people not to get in mastermind groups with partners, business partners, employees, people you work for or with. You need They need to be non-biased. Right. And, and I know you talk about uh, how you get held accountable, how you know there's there's a – there's a platform of the mastermind group that a lot of them follow. You know, you come in, you talk about, you know, did you accomplish your goals last week? If, yeah. if not, what's holding you back? What are your goals this week? And you, you get feedback and stuff like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's a very professional type thing, but tell me more about the relationship aspect of it. Yeah. Well, the thing is, right. First of all, being in a mastermind group, about 50% of the value is the accountability. Because Ash, if you were to come in there today and you'd say, hey, I got this process I want to implement, this system, you know, I want to do my mission, vision, and value statement, and these are the things that I want to do. You know, like you come back next week and I'm going to say, Ash, did you get that taken care of? Well, no. Well, what's the problem? Well, right. I just didn't get to it. Well, you're not going to hear me but about once or twice say, what are you watching, Andy Griffith at night? What are you doing? Like, And you're going to get it done, right, because you don't want to have egg on your face in the group. Well, as a result of getting it done, you're going to become more successful and it just goes from there. Challenging each other on personal development, you know, challenging how you take care of your wife or your children, challenge you on civic responsibilities, challenge you on your diet, uh, challenge you on reading for the week, you know, et cetera. There's 10 things that we rank every person on every week. They rank themselves and they're honest. I mean, you can, you put a bunch of liars in there. You're going to be honest. And as a result of knowing you've got to rank yourself, you're going to do the work. And as you do the work, you get better. That's the main thing. The other thing is the relationship piece. I know right now I could pick up the phone and I could call any 10 members and say, hey, man, I'm in trouble. I'm in a spot. I need this, that. They would do whatever. And it's because of those long-term relationships. 
number one key to building a successful business is building relationships intentionally. Yeah. But because like you said, Aaron, sometimes entrepreneurs focus on the bottom line and the dollar can get in the way of the clarity and you're not looking at every avenue. Mm -hmm. And I, I just love how you talk about and how you help other young entrepreneurs understand like, Hey, yeah, it's, it's great to create a product or create a service and start cash flowing it. And all of a sudden all these opportunities open up, but just because you're able to retire early and play golf every day, doesn't mean you're happy. You know, I heard you say on a previous podcast with John Lee Dumas on entrepreneur on fire that when you wake up with purposeful action, that's one of the key ingredients to happiness. Here's what I found out in that accident, Ash, back uh, when I ran over this pedestrian, which was really, really horrific, really, really made uh, uh, a paradigm shift for me in my life. But here's what I found out. The only thing that really matters in life is those relationships. People really don't care what you have. They don't care that you're driving a new car, living in a house. They're, they're glad for you, but they really don't care. What they care about is how your inspiration or your influence has been tremendously impactful in their life. Like, how is Ash going to be better as having known me? And when we start focusing on that and we start looking outward rather than inward and we start doing video endorsements for one another when they don't ask you or we get on LinkedIn and say, Ash is the bomb, man. You got to go to Liberty <laughs> Entrepreneurs, you know, without you asking or I'm calling you saying, Ash, man, how can I help you? Who can I connect you with today that would impact your life? Who would you like to know? When you start doing those things intentionally, it takes the focus off of yourself and it helps those persons accomplish their goals and dreams. And when you lay down at night, you go, man, I was purposeful today. Mm. I was meaningful today. And here's what happens invariably is that when you do that and you take that approach because it's a mindset shift, the natural reciprocity is everybody else wants to help you. Right. Right. Then they start saying, hey, man, thanks for doing that. Let me help you here. Let me help you there. Let me give you this source. Let me introduce you. It's amazing at how much more successful you will become when you have that mindset shift. Yep, a absolutely. Aaron, let's segue that into viewfromthetop.com. Mm -hmm. This is your website where you host masterminds and organize mastermind groups. I know you do coaching services and stuff as well. It seems like you're really putting your actions where your words are and you've built an entire website and a community around this type of, Hey, let's serve one another. And ultimately that's what an entrepreneur does. You know, we go out into society and we're looking for what pains are out here? How ultimately, how can I help someone be in a better place? And maybe that's a lawn mowing service, or maybe that's a, some type of elderly caretaking service, but ultimately we're trying to make each other stronger and more comfortable as entrepreneurs. Can you tell my audience a little bit about how you got the idea for view from the top and, and just what it is and how you're cultivating this idea of relationships with that site? Yeah, that's good. Well, first of all, the name came about view from the top. Nobody wants a view from the bottom. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right. We all want to be. Now you've got to determine and decide for you personally, what is the view from the top? We help people really understand what they want. We've even got an exercise that we go through. I wrote a program several years ago and it takes you through what is you even want? Most people don't know. Ash, if I were to ask you today, and I won't, but if I were to say, <laughs> on the spot. hey, Ash, listen, man, tomorrow morning, there were no geographic or financial limitations, right? Sky's the limit. What yep. would you do with your life? Right. Most people can't answer that question because they're grinding it out. They got to mm -hmm. make a little money to make that mortgage payment or that car payment or whatever you figure it out. They don't live intentionally. They're living reactively, not proactively. We help people understand, hey, this is the way you want to live. Robin and I have been doing that our entire marriage. We've been married 36 years now. We decide, hey, you know what? This is the way we want to live. We want to go to these places. We want to make this kind of money. We don't let our parents influence our decisions, our peers, our colleagues. We live the life we want to live. We're not influenced by that peer pressure. We even sold a house. We had a ginormous house. And when the kids were growing and gone, we sold it. We didn't need it. We bought a house the third of the size of that one. It's in an area that's beautiful. It's back in the woods, but it's a lot easier to take care of. You know the reason? Because I want to be at the ballpark on the weekends with my grandkids. I don't want to be taking care of this big monstrosity. Mm -hmm. 
So we did that very intentionally. A lot of people look and say, man, you sold that house for this house. <laughs> well, you know what, though? That's what we wanted. We're happy there. We love it, and we want it. So all I'm saying is, is we teach people to live intentionally, and that's the very thing that we do. We also teach people to live outward, not inward, and it's a very deliberate process. I mean, very, very intentional. We even have Google Docs that we put things on how we're going to do things, how we're going to reach out. Can I give you a practical application that I think any of your listeners could do? Absolutely. So last weekend, we were at a uh, Ray Edwards Copywriting Academy uh, conference. And I know Ray. He's been my guest. I've been his. And we built a relationship over the past three or four years. So what we do is I believe in Ray. And so what we do is we look up their schedule and we say, hey, they're having this event. We tweet that out. We'll post it. I did a video and I said, hey, man, you got to go check out Ray's. He didn't ask for that. Not any of that. Mm -hmm. We do. Jeff Goins is a friend of mine here in Nashville. And I'm promoting his book all the time. And Dave Ramsey stuff, I'm promoting it all the time. Dan Miller stuff, I'm promoting it all the time. Innovate. Go to Entree Leadership Masters. We're giving. We're giving. We're giving. So I said that to say this. So. Uh, this past weekend, Ray standing up on the stage, and we own another company called Interview Valet. And out of the blue, <laughs> we didn't ask him to do this. He gave us a 30-second infomercial in front of 300 people because we had been giving, giving, giving. It was his turn. Right. If I'd have went up and not done any of that, and I said, hey, Ray, why don't you give me a shout-out to Interview Valet? He's like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. This is my event, right? And And why? Yeah. So what I'm saying is, is we tweet people out constantly. We're all the time trying to give. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, people want to naturally help you. That's the whole premise behind what I'm saying is build those relationships. We have people call us that are going into coaching mastermind. We help them. We tell them what we're doing. We give them our resources. Hey, man, t take our logo off. Put yours on there. If it'll help you. And they're like, what? Right. And I'm like, seriously, whatever we can do to help you. We promote other coaches. Mm -hmm. Right. We're on telling about you need to go see Robert Mallon with the Rusty Line. They're an awesome group. And they're like, what are you saying? I'm saying they're an awesome group. Right. It's like, hey, isn't this one of your competitors? Well, yeah, but they're they're friends of mine, too. Yeah. The thing is, man, there's plenty out there for everybody. Sure. But if you take an attitude like I'm talking about, you know, show when we were in the construction industry, we do parade of homes and other builders would come through there and they'd be sneaking around, kind of taking pictures. We built some really, really nice places. And I'm like, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm sorry. I said, no, come here. Let me show you where I got that. <laughs> like, oh, seriously. Yeah. Or we text it to him. Hey call this person you can and they're they're looking at you like you got two heads what are you saying i'm saying hey let me help let me introduce you here's what we did too i'll tell you one more thing call that next interview and tell them you're canceling me and you're gonna go for two hours but anyway <laughs> we formed an alliance in the construction industry the 10 top builders in nashville tennessee where i live instead of fighting we formed an alliance called the master custom builder council and they're like, what did you do that for? Well, here's why we did that. We compete every day. We were always competing on the same jobs because the 10 builders were the most noted builders in Middle Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So we get together every fourth Thursday of the month and we strategize. We bring in vendors. We bring in uh, subcontractors. We have meetings. We build parade houses and promote them. That group those 10 builders that I was associated with the last year I was in construction, we did $115 million wow. in construction. And here's what happened. We joined together and we started buying in bulk and we got it cheaper. And when we got it cheaper, we were able to pass it to the customer. And when we passed it to the customer, they told all their friends and we got more jobs. Yep. Just more evidence of networking and relationship and it's taking care of your people. And yep. Most people would say, oh, they're my competitor. Let's get in a room and let's help each other. We shared vendors. We shared subcontractors. We bought together. We still competed. It was sure. even fun. It was like, hey, dude, I'm going to get this job. You better right, look right. Up. right. This, one, th this one's mine. Here's uh, the thing, Ash. You can do that in any industry. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you're doing, but when you hold your cards close to your vest and you don't show, you're operating out of a mentality of scarcity. Mm -hmm. And when you go the other way, there's plenty for everybody. Aaron, what type of person do you think makes a good member of a mastermind group or possibly even mm -hmm. someone for, for business coaching? That's a good question. Adam Grant wrote a great book called Givers and Takers. You're one or the other. If you're listening to my voice, you're a giver or you're a taker. 
The thing that will get you eliminated in the application process for joining Iron Sharpens Iron Mastermind Group is saying, hey, who else is in the group? What's the average income? What do they do? What are their connections? How can they help me? And then they stop. And I'm, I'm like waiting because I'm waiting for them to say, hey, I've got 25 years experience in this and I've got a lot of knowledge. I've got a lot of people I can bring to the table. I can teach you. They're a giver. The other person was a taker. I don't want takers. I don't want to be around takers. I want a room full of givers because if you're in there and everybody's a room full of givers, you're going to get more than you can deal with. Right? It's just that natural reciprocity again. If you bring an attitude of giving everybody in the mastermind, man, listen, Ash, we leave there with so many resources and connections that we can't see after all of them. We can't even, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So that's an ideal person for a mastermind is somebody that brings an attitude of, man, how much value can I bring to this group? That's the guy I want in my group. Yeah. And, and what a freeing perspective and optimistic perspective that is, Aaron. I mean, if, if you know, and you're confident in your value and you know that you're in the, in the marketplace, we're always looking for value exchange. And when you know your value and you know what you can give to people, just just giving and helping someone could be the ends in in and of itself. You know, it's like, I, I, I would love to help some of my listeners build a business or at least they can, you know, send me your business ideas and I'll, I'll give you feedback. I mean, what can I do to help all of you become successful? Right. Aaron, that that's exactly what your mentality is. And I really appreciate it. Um, let's dig in a little bit about freedom, Aaron. And sure. it's, you know, my, the theme of my show is that personal and, individual freedom is accomplished through entrepreneurship and taking control and living purposefully and knowing what you're going to accomplish, or at least have a good idea of what you're trying to accomplish. How has becoming an entrepreneur, Aaron, created more freedom in your own life? You know, that's, uh, that's really cool that you asked that. And it's hard for me to compare it with anything because since I was 18 years old, I've been an entrepreneur. So 38 years, I've been an entrepreneur. I've never worked for anybody else uh, since I was 18 years old. And so the freedom that I experience today, we'll call it success, uh, is one of the best benefits of being an entrepreneur. Here's the thing, Ash, we have to decide for ourselves what success even is. And on this journey as an entrepreneur, I've determined for me that choosing my own schedule and having financial freedom is huge for me, just success, right? Having an engaging family and meaningful relationships is really important. And when you're an entrepreneur, you're able to do other things, you know, the spontaneity of being able to go and do family events or with the children or ball practices, you know, you might have to work a little bit at night, but you can take off during the day. Some of the other things that are really important to me, along with the freedom, and I determine having a clear conscience, with every transaction that I do gives me a great sense of freedom. When I think through, am I being honest? Am I being totally transparent? Am I really reaching out, being authentic? Am I being that guy the same, right? Am I the same in front of Ash as I am in front of my wife and my mm. children? I want one guy to show up right. everywhere that I'm at. You know, I've discerned also that freedom for me is taking care of myself physically. You know, I'm 55 years old now. I'm still in pretty good shape. Matter of fact, I've seen pictures of you. I think I can take you. Ash. I, anyway. I, you might, you might be able to, you, you're a, you're a big guy, Aaron. I am a big guy. You you know, not only have you seen pictures, I mean, you've seen me in person. Yep. Listen, also, uh, learning to be content. It's a great amount of freedom when you can learn to be content. You know, don't be that person. I'm going to be happy when you fill in the blank, when I get this bigger house, make more money, but don't confuse that with being complacent. I don't want anybody to be complacent, man. I like to put the pedal to the metal. I like to go. I want to grow. I'm a creator developer, and I want to encourage you to do the same thing. Having freedom also is having a clear sense of direction, right? I want to know where I'm going. That's why I told you earlier, Brooke and I had a three-hour strategy meeting this morning. I want to be very, very clear where I'm heading. I want to be able to dream big and establish goals. I'm a Christian, so my faith is really important to me, and having meaning and purpose. Here's the thing, Ash, at the end of the day, what will give you the greatest amount of freedom is leaving a legacy. And I want my legacy to be wisdom. I want people to say, you know what? He did okay financially, but that guy had a lot of wisdom. So for me, 
That's what freedom's about. Absolutely. And very well said. It's, it's just amazing how entrepreneurship can bring different types of freedom to so many different people in so many different ways. But ultimately, set, you know, helping other people is what I'm finding from doing all of these interviews is that's the common thing that all the entrepreneurs have in common, that when I talk to them, it's the service associated with uh, entrepreneurship. Aaron, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you today. Uh, do you mind giving your website again? Yeah, that'd be great. Hey, I brought a little gift for your listeners. Is it okay if I give it away? Absolutely. Let's do it. Two things. First of all, you can find me at viewfromthetop.com. Uh, Twitter, I love to hang out with guys at VFT Coach. And so I invite you to come there as well. There are three documents I use every day, and I wrote these years ago. One is a personal assessment where we really dive deep into your identity and your ideals, relationships, career, your faith, your family. There's no right or wrong answer. They're just real deep thought provoking questions. And I use this with my coaching clients. Another one I mentioned briefly is what do I want? It's about 30 questions that really help you live proactively, really dive deep into the way you want to live your life. And you say, well, all right, I get it. Now I know who I am. Now I know what I want, but I don't know what to do next. I wrote a course called steps to a productive day. And it's a very methodical regimented system. It's kind of a to-do list on steroids that it walks you through every day, the important things that you want to accomplish, because when you're very methodical, you're much more productive. And I'm a really regimented guy. And I think that um, most people need to be more regimented. They'd be more productive. I've taken the price off those. I'm going to give them to your audience. So if you'll just go to viewfromthetop.com forward slash Liberty, all lowercase letters, those three documents will be there to help you live a more successful and significant life. Well, that sounds great, Aaron. I really appreciate it. I, I've actually already started using these. I signed up on your website a couple months ago, back when I heard your interview with Pat Flynn of the Smart Passive Income Podcast, a wonderful podcast. You had a great interview there, Aaron. Uh, so thank you for that. Again, that's viewfromthetop.com forward slash liberty for my audience to go and check out what Aaron's up to and get some of these free resources. Start living more purposefully because it's going to create more happiness and more freedom and your own life. Aaron, before I let you go, uh, you're from Tennessee. I'm from North Carolina. I'm sure my my Southern accent has come out a little bit <laughs> richer in this. Oh, that made me feel comfortable. <laughs> Uh, I will say that I think North Carolina barbecue is probably the best in the world. Well, uh, it's second. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and, and we'll give a shout out to our buddy, Matt Miller there. He's from Texas. You're uh, you guys are in a distant third there, Matt. Sorry about that, buddy. <laughs> All right, Aaron. Good thank luck. you. Thank you so much. You're awesome. Man. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Thanks. Yeah, Ash. Appreciate See you, it. Yeah. Bye-bye. You just listened to episode 47 mastermind groups, the secret key to success with Aaron Walker. If you're interested in mastermind groups, send me a message on Facebook or Twitter or uh, email directly at info at libertyentrepreneurs.com. Also check out Aaron's website, viewfromthetop.com slash liberty to download your free documents. I really appreciate the Bitcoin and Dash tips from the last episode with Amanda B. Johnson and thanks to whoever is donating. Until next time, keep building freedom. <laughs>